124 Canadian Armed Forces members we know are helping navigate this emergency. They were deployed earlier this week. We're going to bring you the latest on the federal response. The Minister of National Defence, Bill Blair, is going to be joining me in just moments. But let's show you the scene uh, we have just in from Edmonton. We know this massive evacuation from Yellowknife into Alberta, notably. And we're going to bring you live reporting from the community of Leduc later on in this hour. But the flights, the very first flight from Yellowknife out, took off earlier this afternoon. And some of those people are now beginning to arrive in Edmonton. Let's listen to some of their comments as they arrived to safety earlier today. It was really smoky. It's getting slightly better. I think it was raining right as we were leaving and it rained overnight. So I, th I think maybe the conditions are better than they were yesterday, but I'm not really sure. Definitely really worried, but relieved that I'm out now and I'm safe. So yeah, just uh, looking forward to when we can get back. We got a hotel here and we're going to be here for five days and hopefully we can go home. It's been hectic. It's really crazy. And I guess there's nothing open in town too. My dad phoned this morning and said there's no food stores, nothing open, so he's kind of, they're on their own. Whoever stayed behind is on their own. So there is uh, some commentary from people who are now in safety, but it was quite a scene outside Sir John Franklin High. The evacuation order in Yellowknife went out late last night, and it urged people to leave by car, by vehicle, if that was at all possible. Those who were unable to do so, they were to take flights. And there are a number of flights leaving from Yellowknife today. We'll talk about that in a moment. But the lineup, immediately hundreds, all through the early part of today, as I say, outside Sir John Franklin High School. Some of the comments to us from people in that line. Let's listen to those people now. There was, there was five of us, so we took three vehicles. Like, it was... Like, pretty smoky. We had probably an hour of daylight when we were driving through Bechco, which it wasn't too bad, but that's definitely changed, like, as everyone's driving out right now. Um, we stopped in Fort Providence. Like, the gas station was closed, unfortunately. Um, because we drove in the dark, we also almost hit a bison. And pretty much, like I said, once we hit Kakiza and, like, between Kakiza and Alexander Falls, it just, like, was so smoky, it changed, like, drastically. And... Um, we brought N95, so we had our N95 on, and we were, like, crawling at, like, 30 kilometers an hour. All right, my apologies. Obviously not people waiting to get on a plane, people who experienced that uh, really terrifying drive outside of Yellowknife to safety. As I mentioned, the Canadian Armed Forces already on the ground, helping with the evacuation, helping with the firefight. 124 Canadian Armed Forces members deployed earlier this week. What lies ahead? Let us bring in the Minister of National Defence. Bill Blair is with me now. Minister Blair, good to see you, and welcome back to Power and Politics, sir. Thank you very much, Heather, and thank you for having me on today. I know you have you may have left the meeting or else it's just wrapped up, but the Prime Minister convened the Incident Response Group meeting this afternoon. You were part of that roundtable convened this afternoon. What can you announce coming out of that just moments ago? Well, I, I can tell you the Prime Minister made it very clear to all of his ministers that, that all of us have to lean in and do everything that is necessary to support uh, the people of, of Yellowknife, the people of the Northwest Territories, all of the impacted communities and do everything possible, uh, working with the territorial government, but also with some of our provincial partners to do what is necessary to keep pe keep people safe, to get them to the safety. Um, as we heard in your, in your earlier reporting, it's a very traumatic thing to have for people to have to be evacuated from their communities. And we're doing everything that we can in order to support them and to keep them safe. The Canadian Armed Forces, as, you, as you've said, have been now have been deployed into the territories um, since, since Saturday. And for the last five days, have been working very closely with local authorities on uh, planning the logistics of the evacuation. Part of that is, is logistics around an airlift, which, which it, with it becomes necessary, we want to make sure that we have everything in place in, in all of the aircraft. We've been very, working very closely through the Minister of Transport with, uh, with, with commercial airlines as well. The Canadian Armed Forces have staged a number of their aircrafts that will be necessary if, to, to help people out. And, and also supporting the, the, the evacuation by highway. And, I, and knowing how challenging that, that, that can be, uh, the, the, the uh, first Ranger Patrol group, about 30 of our, our Rangers who are part of the Canadian, an important part of the Canadian military, who are from the community, or have been out helping people through that evac the road evacuation. And as well, we're working really closely in planning and logistics. And it's one of the things the Canadian Armed Forces 
um, thankfully has a great deal of experience in, is very good at it. They're there working with local officials. Uh, so thank you. I wanted to get the overarching statement and, and I can appreciate do whatever is possible to help with this crisis situation. But let's uh, look specifically at one of the things you mentioned, airlift. We know uh, you have, I believe, four aircraft that could help with evacuations right now in Yellowknife, a Herc, a Twin Otter, and two Griffin helicopters, one on standby, another Griffin helicopter in Edmonton. How close are you to ordering an airlift, Minister Blair? Well, again, we're working really closely with the, the, the airport, with commercial airlines, and with the territorial government. But in addition to the, the, the aircraft that we have actually on site, you know, we don't want to stage those air aircraft in the, in, 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 and tax the limited uh, facilities of, of that airport. So we've got uh, two C-130 uh, Hercules uh, aircraft in, in staging in Edmonton. We have also got other aircraft in, in Cold Lake and in Trenton, um, in, in Winnipeg and in other places. And we're quite prepared within a very very, very short period of time, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking only uh, two hours, to start moving uh, large aircraft through there to assist in, with the evacuation and, and also working with commercial airlines to, to ensure that we coordinate and make maximum use of those airfields and, 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 and we, we can get people to safety. I'm very confident. Can I, can I just frankly, be clear, just to make sure I understood you clearly? You are in a yeah. position, if you give the order, within two hours you could get this operational. Are you ordering that now? And if not, how close are you to ordering that? Our, our, the Canadian Armed Forces, their personnel are, are embedded within the Emergency Operations Centre in Yellowknife. They're, they're working in, and doing the planning and logistics around this. Um, we are, I am quite prepared. For the moment they, they believe it is necessary to begin that air evacuation, right now the highways are open and right now the land uh, routes of egress from the community and to safety are, 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 are still functional and still available. And that's the best and safest fit, to, to way to get people out. But we are, we are, this has been a staged evacuation and we're working make, to make sure that people who are vulnerable, people um, in, in, in long-term care facility or, or the elderly or, or the infirm are, are, are make, make sure that we are able to take care of them. Um, we are prepared to, to initiate the, the air evacuation. Um, a number of people have already been, been leaving on commercial flights. Right. And, and we're, when, it, when it is appropriate, we have all of the air caps st staged into the region and we can start moving them in and then out as, as, as necessary. All right, you're quite right. Much of the focus today has been on commercial flights, how many are available, the price of those tickets, et cetera. But I just want, again, to be clear, uh, should we anticipate at some point there will be a military component, that there will be uh, people boarding military aircraft to get to safety, should we anticipate that? Well, I, I think you should anticipate it, and, and, and quite frankly, the, the situation we're monitoring very carefully, the movement of the fire and, and, and the way in which it may threaten um, populated areas in, in Yellowknife, but also in Hay River and, and Fort Smith and other places. Uh, the military have already evacuated people by airlift out of, out of Hay River and, and Fort Smith, for example, um, earlier this week, and, and we are quite prepared um, when it becomes necessary, and, and we believe the situation, certainly the, the, the Northwest Territories government, the, the the authorities in Yellowknife have made it very clear that they've ordered an evacuation and, and that they, they are encouraging people to take the appropriate steps to, to move to safety as quickly and, and as, as possible and we'll be there to support them however the, it is necessary to move them and should it be necessary to, to move um, them on, on Canadian military aircraft. We've staged the aircraft in, in the region. We're quite prepared uh, to, to initiate that uh, when it's required. We'll, we'll be there for people as they need us and, and we'll make sure that this is done safely and efficiently. And it's, it's, frankly, it's not just getting people out of the community, Heather. There's, there's important work going on to make sure that when we get them to safety, that there are reception centers and accommodations and, and supports that will be available to them in the communities. We're working very closely um, with, with our counterparts in, in Alberta and in British Columbia um, and, and you know, working with, with um, some humanitarian organizations like the Canadian Red Cross to make sure that those are, supports are there uh, because we know that, that this can be very traumatic. And it, even something as simple, one of the things that we've always found, people are very reluctant to leave their pets behind. Mm -hmm. And so work has already begun working with the commercial airlines. Transportation Canada has 
issued exemptions so that people can board their flights with with those animals because we want to remove any impediment or discouragement from people um, from, from following the evacuation order and getting to safety. And we want to assure them that we'll be there to help get them to safety, but also to help support them uh, when, when, when they are in, in an evacuated situation. And a number of organizations indicating they are working very actively on that as well. Can I ask you, as I mentioned earlier, the prime minister convening this incident response group, the highest level of response to a crisis of this nature, and we understand that he has been uh, being briefed regularly on this. He is on vacation in British Columbia right now. Is there any indication that he'll be returning from vacation early to deal with this, Minister Blair? Well, I, I, can, I can assure you the Prime Minister is fully engaged on this, and quite frankly, in, in an emergency situation like that, everybody puts their vacation plans simply on hold, and we're there for people. And I know the Prime Minister has been in contact with Premier Cochrane. I, mean, I know Minister Sajan and I have both been in, in contact with Minister Thompson and with our provincial counterparts as well. And of course, the Canadian Armed Forces have been there. I also want to, want to mention the important work of the RCMP. They have an important detachment, um, over 100 personnel deployed into, into Yellow Knife now. They're working in those communities. They know those communities and the people there and and you know they're, they're making sure that people are safe and that that the evacuation can be done in an orderly way but but for our government heather it's all hands on deck and as, as i said for first nations community mr haidu and, and mr anand sangri were on that call and they've reached out to their counterparts and to make sure that people know the supports are there for them and that they will be there to assist them as well the minister of transportation the minister of health the minister of procurement um certainly public safety all of us have have been fully engaged on this file and will continue to be because this is um, you know, a, a word we far too often use, but in these circumstances, it's quite appropriate. Okay. This is an unprecedented situation, and it's absolutely necessary. We do everything to assist and support the people of the Northwest Territories and those communities impacted by these fires. Just to be clear, had the meeting concluded, Minister Blair, are you going back into the meeting? To Will there be further news to announce, or, or shall we leave it at this for now and await further word from, uh, from your ministry, other ministries involved in this? I'm sure that the, the meeting has concluded. There'll be a readout from that meeting, and each of the implicated ministries uh, will be speaking about the, the number of initiatives that, that they are taking to support. Um, there, there's an important work I know going on in public safety. We are talking to the community and to our humanitarian organization partners about, about financial supports, about the supports that we need to make sure that we provide to people who've been evacuated. But our first priority right now is getting people to safety, protecting their homes, protecting their communities, protecting critical infrastructure, but most most importantly, protecting Canadians' lives. Which we're going to talk about in a moment with the mayor. But again, just to be clear before I let you go, and I appreciate the time, nothing more to announce from defense as far as additional supports immediately. I mean, obviously, much on standby, but no announcements to be made at this moment as far as additional we'll, supports. We'll certainly, we'll certainly keep you apprised when when, and if and when those uh, those those aircraft uh, begin to, rem to take people. And But I also want to assure you, uh, we, I've, we've staged quite a number of aircraft and, and people and resources in order to provide assistance and support to this evacuation. And we are quite prepared to bring whatever resources are required to make sure that we get people to safety. Okay. We'll definitely be in touch further. Thank you so much. The Minister of National Defence, Bill Blair.